The first program brings out the creativity and it shows the possibilities, what you can achieve with an understanding of science, math, and engineering. They were the company that were the backbone, a poster child for what a big company could do. FIRST is the best way for students to gain real-world skills and knowledge. It teaches teamwork, it teaches discipline, it teaches responsibility, it teaches leadership. BAE Systems is really proud of its partnership with FIRST Robotics. We sponsor over 80 teams in eight states. Investment in STEM programs is vital to the continued success and sustainment of companies like BAE Systems. They're changing the perspective and the career trajectories of a whole generation of kids. I greatly appreciate that for 25 years, BAE has been a stalwart supporter of FIRST. Hello and welcome to our first BAE Systems Minibot Challenge, Mondrian Madness. Now, Mondrian was an artist who was well known for his simple geometric shapes, but they were complex in their simplicity. One of the things that he always did was to stay within the lines, and that's what we're going to be asking you to do. Now, Mondrian Madness uses the in-the-box equipment, but it does require some out-of-the-box thinking. And that means that we want you to use only the equipment that we sent to you or that you purchased, but it has to match the same set that we sent. So it's going to have the Raspberry Pi and the Romy board, these motors, and this frame. And now, without further delay, I present to you the map. The map is a 36 inch square. It's got black lines that are very prominent and all of those lines are two centimeters thick. The map is divided into 16 square regions. Now, the lines that you see in the interior are nine inches from the edge of the page to the center of the inner line. The curves have a nine inch radius. These are 90 degree arcs as measured from the center cross, which is blue, to the center of that curved arc. The map contains a starting circle that's green and a target zone that's red. For printing the map, we recommend that you print it on a wide format printer. You can use paper or vinyl, whatever substrate that you think is most appropriate. If you don't have access to a wide format printer, then you can tile the PDF that's included by using Adobe Reader or Acrobat. And then when you tile those pages, make sure that you tape them together and that they overlap securely so that the robot doesn't catch when it drives along those seams. Now that we've seen the map, let's take a look at the challenge. Each run will start with the robot on the starting circle, that's that green circle right there, and the robot will completely cover it. Then when the run starts, the robot will travel down the chute, and it'll take a left-hand turn, uh, they will go down into the yellow zone, they'll turn again, and then cross the mid zone there, take a right at blue, they will travel this way, and take another right-hand turn, and they will end up in the target zone. So the run will end when the robot is completely within the target zone, and that will mean any part of the red target zone color being visible from above. We ask that each team record two runs, one teleop and one autonomous. Now there are some penalties and there's not many, but if you do cross a line, then that does accrue a penalty. And also if you touch the robot before the completion of the run. Another way to accrue a penalty is if the robot ends its run and it's not completely within the target zone. Now penalties are described in detail inside the rules. So please read the rules before you record your runs. We're giving you plenty of time to practice and tune your code before you need to make and record the runs that you're going to submit. You need to make and record those runs between 12.01 a.m. on Friday, February 26th and 11.59 p.m. on Saturday, February 27th. Let's go see how we record and then submit the runs. 
Now, before we get going, I have a couple of questions for you. This is my friend Zeke here, who's going to help me out from Team 172 Northern Force. First off, Zeke, uh, are you personally participating in the BAE Systems Minibot Challenge? I am not, no. And have you revealed any of the things that we are about to show to your teammates on Team 172? No. Excellent. Let's get going. Might be a good idea to put some tape down to prevent the mat from moving around. Getting the whole family in the action, we've got Mrs. Lockman here, from Team 172 Northern Forest, holding up the camera above the field so that we can see the entire run when you make your submission. And now we're gonna give a shot at a tele-operated run. Go ahead, Zeke. And he's off, taking that left-hand turn, heading down to the yellow square. Oh, and he's made a penalty right there as the wheel crossed the line. Taking one more turn, coming into the target zone, and remember, you've got to be completely in target zone to score, and there it is! Each team can submit one autonomous run and one tele-operated run. Now, those runs don't have to be done on the same robot or with the same robot code. But once you complete the two runs, you do need to submit them together using our online form. To complete that form, you will need your team number, the team name, a contact email, the total time for the autonomous, the count of penalties in the run that you're going to submit for autonomous, the total time for teleoperated, and the total number of penalties for the teleoperated run, the link to the robot code, and the link to the videos that show your complete runs. And those, again, have to be recorded from above so that we can see how the robots performed on the field. We know that you'll have questions. And so we're going to host some office hours between now and February 26th. Please check the WPI Lib page to see that schedule. From all of us here at NE First, we're looking forward to seeing your solution to this deceptively simple challenge. Good luck.